Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it is finally time for us to review Dark Souls Remastered on the Nintendo Switch. It's only been about 40 billion years. This review was originally written by the lovely Dom Rise Lincoln and has been adapted for video by me. And that means that all the footage that you're seeing is from me, so it's bad. Feel free to remind me in the comments. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. The Nintendo Switch has played host to countless ports in the relatively brief 18 months it's been on the market, but every so often one comes along with all the prestige and reverence that made it such a touchstone elsewhere. Last year we arguably had such a game with Skyrim, a port that was made even lovelier by the fact that it was its first foray into proper handheld territory, and that hasn't happened since that Elder Scrolls game on the N-Gage. Don't quote me on that. So don't you think that it's rather fitting that the next piece of lauded software to join the ranks on the Switch should be that other seminal action RPG that launched in 2011 from software's sublime Dark Souls. Much like Bethesda's highly influential installment in the Elder Scrolls saga, the original and, let's be honest, the best installment in the Japanese-made series is elevated by its support for handheld play. Yes, Demon's Souls is a thing and it did come before Dark Souls, but it's hard to say so it can shut up. But handheld play is not the only reason you should be returning to Lordran or making the pilgrimage for the very first time either. Dark Souls and, by extension, the impressively faithful polish-up that is the remastered version that we are chatting about this instant is a masterclass in video game design. If you've already delved into the game one or more times before, then you... Well, why are you watching this? It's just the remastered version. But if you're new to the series, then forget everything that you've heard about it being some exclusive game for only hardcore gamers and it's sort of an impenetrable boys club. It's definitely hard and the game will punish you time and time again, but every single time you die you'll get just a little bit better and the game will become a little bit more accessible. It's a long process, but it's a rewarding one. You'll start the game with a character that you've briefly created and then subsequently never really see their face again, so don't worry too much about it. Then once you've done that, you'll realise that this game has no desire to hold your hand or stroke your ego. The character classes that you can choose from appear relatively obtuse in their definitions, and they don't really give any more information anywhere else. Then once you begin your adventure in true Elder Scrolls style, you'll be in a prison and then escape pretty much immediately. As you emerge, you'll be greeted by bloodstains on the wall and some sort of scrawled messages on the ground that give you well, not a lot of information. This is how you dodge, this is how you make a heavy attack, this is how you make a light attack, here's how you use the parry that you'll probably never be able to pull off until you've put a good number of hours in. Basically simple mechanics, but ones that you've no doubt used plenty of times before in other games. You'll encounter the warming, safe, warming glow of a warming bonfire, and then push through an imposing set of doors and enter a barren hall. You're probably thinking to yourself, ah, this game isn't so hard, what's all the fuss about? And then an asylum demon comes down and tries to kill you. This is where we enter the duality of Dark Souls. Do you run or do you fight it? The answer is at this point you run. Once you've made good your escape, you'll no doubt find a sword and a shield and you'll be taken through a few other smaller enemies to try and sort of prepare you for this monstrosity, although it doesn't prepare you enormously. But learn its attack patterns, get an idea of how the whole thing works, and work out what its weaknesses are, even though the game will never tell you it's just trial and error, and maybe you'll discover that it's not quite so daunting a thing after all. But if you do die, you'll at least know why you died and you'll be able to to rise up once more from the bonfire outside, ready to rush back into battle. And when you finally do destroy it, you'll be rewarded with that hard-earned sense of elation few other games can generate as you open a new set of doors and begin your journey into Lordran itself. 
Yep, that was the tutorial. You walk into the game, it tells you briefly what you need to do, and then it just kicks you into the main game and it's like, <laughs> off you go. The world of Lordran isn't some world filled with smaller enemies that serve as fodder or anything like that. There's no mud crabs to deal with, there's nothing that's just going to take a few hits. Well, that's not quite true, but even so, every enemy that you come up against will test you. Some distinctly more than others. Even something as simple as a shambling figure with basically no armor can still take you by surprise if you're not fully prepared for it, and can deal a hefty amount of damage. True, it's only going to take a couple of strikes from your weapon, but that means that you've automatically got less health for the stuff that's not going to be so simple. Undead archers, towering knights with agility that completely defies their bulk, every single battle is kind of its own boss fight, a constant crucible that tests you with extreme prejudice. Having addressed many of the design issues that made its predecessor Demon's Souls, Oh god, we mentioned it anyway. A little rough around the edges, Dark Souls was a breath of fresh air at the time. Believe it or not, at one point this was considered accessible. But after seven years, it is gradually starting to show its age. Textures have been cleaned up for the most part, and environments feature a little bit more detail, but really it does sort of smack of an older game. Frame rate performance has been improved the most, with some of the game's most notoriously broken sections, yes, I'm talking about Blight Town, now run far more smoothly. But many of the game's other bugs and exploitable flaws do still remain. But you know what? These little things here and there are part of the character of the game, and you can see that the port studio Virtuos hasn't attempted to fix these in favour of simply improving the performance and visual fidelity in the name of optimization. That old chestnut. Simply put, the game that you may know and may indeed love is here warts and all. The inconsistency and difficulty found in the later bosses, the focus on backtracking and shortcut creation creation completely being discarded later in the game, it's all here, and it's all here. In that sense, Dark Souls Remastered is kind of like a little time capsule that's just been polished on the outside. It's no longer dirty and grimy, but it's the same thing, and it's got the same stuff inside. Dark Souls 2 and 3 arguably did solve some of these issues, even if they're perhaps not as good as the original on the whole. As a port, Dark Souls Remastered is another fine example of how a game should be brought to Switch. As we've already mentioned, the frame rate is consistent in both docked and handheld modes, with almost no slowdown even when you're battling with some of the grisliest and intricate bosses that happen in the game. Granted, it's not the buttery smooth 60 frames a second found on the PS4 and Xbox One versions, but 30 frames a second does the job considering the restrictions imposed by Nintendo's hardware. I mean, the original game was 30, mo well, some of the time at least, so should be fine. There's also amiibo support, including the Solaire of Astora model, I think I said that right. This allows you to get the praise the sun gesture from the very beginning of the game, which is obviously the most important thing. Online play is of course supported on Switch as well, and it benefits from all the much needed adjustments that have been made, including improved matchmaking, removing healing items from PvP, and limiting Estus flasks, and much more besides. However, the approach to menus is, to say the least, a little bit unintuitive with this version. The plus menu opens an in-game inventory system that doesn't suspend the game whilst you're playing, which is kind of the whole Dark Souls thing, so that's fine. But since it's running in a small window, it's often easy to try and control your character whilst not realizing that part of the menu is still open. And if you're in combat, that's a bad. Even pressing the home button doesn't suspend the software either, which does take a little bit of the shine off its portability, but it's it's kind of the whole thing. The buttons are also partially reversed on Switch, with B being used to confirm selections and A being used to go back. What's especially annoying is that pretty much every other action in the game can be remapped to any button you like, but not this. If you're more used to playing the Switch, you can expect to get these confused from time to time, and end up cancelling when you should be accepting, and vice versa. So, in short, whilst we've had to wait a little bit longer than those playing on the PS4 and Xbox One, <laughs> little, the wait has been more than worth it. Dark Souls Remastered is a faithful remaster of an absolute classic in video game design that improves overall performance whilst preserving all of the character traits that made the original such a memorable experience. Whilst it's no less forgiving, and its menus are a little bit fiddly, this slick Nintendo Switch iteration offers the only way to experience Lordran's ultra-challenging odyssey in true handheld form. Praise the sun indeed.
Oh, well, you know what time it is. It's time for my random ramble or just rambly bits at the end of a review. So, uh, yeah, I've, you know, this obviously, again, isn't my review, which is why I'm doing the rambly bit uh, to get my own personal uh, views on it, because why not? It's good for our watch time and you lot seem to like it. So why not? Overall, I'm just so pleased that it's finally here. And yeah, it's 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 Dark Souls again. You know, there are a few things that maybe I would have preferred. You know, there are a few little sort of issues here and there that I have with the game and it's mainly A and B being swapped around for game menus like why? I'm guessing it's maybe because anybody who comes from another version of the game will want to sort of you know, be able to rely on muscle memory even when it comes to menus and stuff like that. But at least give us the option, you know, you you go into the Switch menu and all of a sudden you're pressing B to confirm things and it's just... Ah! But I've been told not to go on about this too much because I have been making a mountain out of a molehill in the uh, in the staff chats about this. Um, but it, it, it is annoying. Some people may tell you otherwise, but if you are new to the game and you do want to try and get into it, do not be afraid to look stuff up online. There, you know, there will be lots of people now, I'm sure, rushing down to the comments saying, no, it must be a trial by fire, you know, let people learn the hard way. But you know what? That's not necessarily fun. The game is still bloody challenging, even if you know what you're doing, as in like, you know the theory behind it, you know about backstabs and stuff like that, and how best to avoid things, you know? Actually putting it into practice is a totally different thing, as you can probably tell from all the rubbish footage. Because yeah, I did play Dark Souls on the 360 when it came out. I uh, had the Prepare to Die edition, I believe. Um, but jumping into this made me realize that I have not only forgotten a lot of what I knew, but even remembering some bits doesn't really help that much. If you're out of practice with the timing and stuff like that, that is going to hamper you more than anything else in this game. It absolutely helps if you do know some of the exploits and things like that, like running into certain corridors, enemies won't follow you and stuff like that. So you can, you know, neck down an est Estus flask or two whilst you're there. But overall, you're really going to need to pay attention to the game and just learn it, you know, just get in there and try the game out. And I don't think looking up guides and stuff online necessarily takes away from the experience, unless you're going for like a full walkthrough, which I, you know, I would say does. But if you're just looking up, you know, like, oh my god, how do I defeat this boss? I think that's fair, you know? The compressed audio also is a bit of a shame, but really, I, I just sort of ignored it after a while and forgot it was there. So, you know, a, a lot of people will be annoyed about that, but realistically, I think people should be more annoyed about A and B being flipped around. But yeah, overall, absolutely love it. It's a really, really rutty good game, to say the least. And it'll, uh, it'll make you its, uh, it'll, it'll make you cry. But anyway, that's all for my ramblings. I'll see you later.